in this episode, we finally get the Dodge truck to duct tape drags. Stick around. All right, so I didn't get a lot of editing done or video taken while there, right? I'm worried about driving and trying to get this thing in line and everything else. I don't really have time to walk around and video very much. Luckily, my wife and some of the guys I was with were able to snag my camera from me and kind of get some footage uh, off of cell phones or off of the actual DSLR camera I have uh, to try to get some footage. So I'm gonna kind of explain how the weekend goes and I'm gonna try to throw in video and try to help tell this story about chasing 15s. It sounds so slow, I know. So, started off, you know, uh, we pack up day one. We actually packed up the night before and got everything prepped. Had a trailer that was as full as we could probably bring anything we could with us. And I think it was five o'clock in the morning, we were on the road heading out there. And I say we wanted to get out there quick. Uh, the line gets long. It gets, it gets that initial rush of everybody trying to get there and it gets busy. So as we kind of push through this line and takes us probably uh, close to an hour to finally get through the main gate, get a nice little corner spot uh, where we don't have to worry about uh, you know, too many people. We just have to worry about you know the people that are immediately next to us. Get the truck parked, and we really start trying to get everything set up. Make our own little area there, and um, I got to get the truck through techs through through the the tech inspection. pretty nervous about that one mainly because if you guys remember we were still putting this thing together like three days beforehand and uh, you know I only had maybe 150 to 200 miles on the truck total I was able to put in or put on it in like those two days and uh, it was completely still in the shakedown you know, we're still an experimental to see if it actually goes anywhere. We're not even, you know, into, you know, fully testing this thing yet, but it's going to go. So we're going to send it through tech and it clears. One more time. I can't run faster than a 1399. According to the tech guy, my helmet is the restriction, not the truck. Really? And I was like, the truck can run faster than a 1399? Because, yep. Right now, your restrictor is your helmet is a DOT and not a Snell 2020. So because it's DOT, you're good up to 1399. You crest in the 13s, you'd be done. Okay, take it. I don't think it's going to, but take it. <laughs> so as we then go through more on tech, um, guy mentions, you know, I can't run faster than I think it was a, into the 13s. Clearly not going to be a problem, right? Our goal, my goal, is 15s and I'll tell you why while we were putting this truck together somebody said and I quote there is no way in hell that truck is running a 15 which means I'm gonna break this truck trying to get it to a 15 <laughs> 
So what's going to happen is we get this, we get the tech through, we're good, we get in line, and at this point everybody's getting in line. So it's going slow. I think the first pass took us about an hour to run through and then which is manageable all right so I didn't bring a uh, GoPro with me I don't know why I did it's in the truck or in the trailer not in the car so I'm about I don't know 10 races out give or take I'm gonna take it easy on the first one if I run faster than 1399 I get disqualified because I don't have the appropriate helmet but if it's close and I think I can get into the 13s, I guess I'm gonna have to make a visit to a speed shop tomorrow morning so I can get an approved helmet and I don't have to, you know, deal with this. Or you just get disqualified because that's, to me, that's a win. This truck gets disqualified because it's running too fast. I won't tell you the time. You know, I'm not gonna tell you what it ran. I'll just tell you it ran faster than 1399. Might be 1398, still counts. All right, I know Megan is in the stands with a camera, so hopefully her video turns out because I can't, like, hold and shift and drive. I'll bring a camera next time. Let's see how this goes. Also, side note, I never really did figure out why the car starts shaking at 80. And I should easily hit 80 in this thing, so I'm just going to give the old lap belt a good... Give it a good tighten. See what happens. Maybe I won't hit 80. We'll see. Sir, thank you. I'm in the clear. By a long shot. Alright, so first run's done. I'm not worried about getting disqualified. She's pretty slow. So, uh, I ran a 1662. Luckily, I beat the Lincoln Town Car that was next to me, though. So if I didn't, I'd probably just go home. Alright, let's get this thing parked. It's super hot. We looked at a couple things quick and got it back in line. And that second time in line took us almost three hours to go from the end of the line to making a pass. So I'm running a helmet this time, even though I'm technically not gonna matter, but in case something does, I guess I'd rather protect the head. Also, this is the taking me two hours, a little over two hours, to go from the end of the line to where I'm at, which is almost there. Because people keep grenading their motors or breaking things and shutting down the track. So today it's been, I think, 10 different cars have nixed the track and it's barely, like, I'll be surprised if it doesn't happen again by the time I get to the front. All right, I also brought a GoPro this time or whatever it is, so.
much much faster on the tree and I did short shift I wasn't trying to baby my shift as much now that I got a little more confidence that the thing can actually make it down the track so we'll see how the time did it's a little warm though I can promise you that Whew. thank you sir point by the time we got done there we didn't even have enough time if we wanted to to get back in line and make another pass they were going to close down the tracks before that so we only had a chance of making two passes during the test and tune period to try to see what's wrong with it and and what's going on now i will say it has a shake at a very weird way at around 70 a little over 70 miles an hour it starts feeling like you're going over rumble strips. And by 80, it's like you're, you know, like on like challenger on re-entry. It just it's shaking. And then by 85 it's gone. So, I've messed with pinning angle before people start bleep blooping down there. Messed with pinning angle, didn't change anything. Um, I had just had the dry shaft initially it's just got balanced before we put it on I, I don't know I don't, we're off to figure it out right but this is not something I can fix the track but uh, I know it's a problem and I obviously don't want to have a catastrophic failure where something breaks at 90 miles an hour on the track we can't change any of this at this point we're dedicated to just yeah we're sending it so start of day two comes around all right, it is technically day two of duct tape drags. Now, what I will say is that day one, we got here, got set up, and it's a win, so hopefully this comes out clear. Um, everything went well, ran the track twice, but there was tons and tons of stoppages from people. There was an RX-7, I guess, that blew its motor there was multiple brakes for rear ends. There's probably 10 cars that have put major stops in the track. So I think the first time I ran, I maybe waited 40 minutes. The second time, it was probably closer to three hours. And that, it, it takes a while. So I only ran twice. I'm gonna run again today. I am this close to breaking into the 15s with my motorhome 440 so I'm optimistic so lots of good cars here really built cars some of them meh, you know more not not I'm all right with that that's where I fall so truck looks good though so I guess let's get into it fourth I stayed in it just a little bit too long and that carburetor just coughed and I just down just down in the water just bogged and uh, so I just backed off I didn't know initially if it was just carburetor if I broke something so get it back in a little bit of RPM make sure I wasn't dousing the track I was good and I just finished out the run so I think I ran like an 18 but 
This time I'm gonna take it a little bit softer, not maybe push my RPM as fast. Worry about trying to get a good reaction time. Let's see if I can get at least a low 16. I think the 15s right now are done. It's just getting too hot. And uh, yeah, all right. It's gonna be a long line. Long line, so. About an hour probably, minimum. My race, so we'll wait. I dropped some air pressure in the rear tire, so I'm hoping that helps with my hookup. Duct tape drags, beautiful scene. Maybe a little bit later, maybe we get out of the peak heat, you know, cut down. I'm not sure. But so as of right now, I added a half court to it because it really didn't like it when it surged that time. And I'll give it one, maybe two more goes, depending on how good it does. Thank you. Oh, oh shit! If I had been in there, he 
Day two actually went pretty well. Uh, there's a ton of events going on, tons of things going on, but day two's track racing is actually cut short. So, any of you who aren't familiar with the duct tape drag schedule, they really do. They really do tailor the racing around the beaters, the beater class. And uh, their goal is, you know, you can't, you don't, they don't want you racing in this beater class anything that's more than five grand, right? And, you know, there's some other, you know, little classes and stuff they do. But, I mean, these are for the dudes that are, in, if you have any money in your, in your vehicle, you're not going to be able to run this. Uh, or you're running in, like, your, your car better be running eights to be competitive. So it's just crazy the amount of like of cars that you get in this. You get the beaters and you get these low like low buck pro mods that are running. It's just and if you're not one of those two, you're spectating at this point because there's nothing else for you to be able to do. The track closes down solely for those. So your day two racing is gonna get cut short. So we did a couple passes, and we learned that around, for me, I think it was around about 4,500 RPM. If I'm still in it and I do a power shift, it just dies. It just stumbles. It's like it floods itself, and that pass is done. I can't make up from that. So I run the 15. I am pumped. Pumped ecstatic. I can't explain. And it seems so dumb. Because it is so slow, you know. But we do it, right? We get the 15, and I, at that point, I'm ready. Because that was my, essentially, I had maybe enough time to run one more time. Uh, and I was not wanting to pull off hood and toolbox and s strip this truck to try to get the weight lower to try to get this tired 440 down the track. But it works. So we go from there. Um, I even let I even uh, let a buddy of mine take it down as well, um, just because he's never raced before in a drag and he wants to do it. And you know the truck is bulletproof for what we're trying to do with it. So you know we bypass the burnout box. We and we just do a an easy shift off the first. So I don't have to worry about you know grenading the rear end. And he does great. He ends up stalling it out, doing a power shift from third to fourth, stays in a little long, and he just floods it out. But overall, he had a blast. You know, he's, I think he still ran like a he ran like an 18, I think, because it because it stumbled. And um, but you know what? He had a blast. I had a blast. Everything else went, went great on the truck. I can't give enough credit to Sean for, for getting out there and helping me haul this thing out there. Um, and then there was also a lot of guys from the area that also showed up to either race or just to spectate. Uh, really impressed. I wish we would have taken a photo with all of us because I want to say there was probably four of us that all were in the same area, the same complex, that were all out there. So... Um, Sean was the guy who helped me bring it down, trailer it, um, kind of helped me at the track there with little minor things. Um, then there was George from Distraction Garage showed up. He happened to be, he drove out there. He brought his little, like a little go-kart, uh, was just zipping around in the pit area, just having fun. Um, and, you know, just just random. I, I, I know he said he was going to try to come out. Like, I... I gotta say, I was impressed. All of a sudden, out of the blue, here's George, and uh, you know, again, it's five-hour drive out there just to be social. Um, and there's some other guys from some of the other shops around here that were out there, and uh, we all did pretty well. Uh, there, nobody did any catastrophic breaking, which is good, and we all got back. All right, Sunday morning. Time to pack up and go home. Uh, we uh, 
Yep. Well, there's still a few that are left. So we know we're not the last ones. But I need Sean to get here so we can load up the trailer. And then load up this trailer to the truck and then we can uh, go from there. The uh, truck did really well. So we were able to get our 15s. There's a lot that we got to get done on it though if I'm going to continue to try to race this thing. Four link has to be adjusted or completely redone. Uh, so I have left hand, right hand thread on one on each side. The current setup I have now is just single and it is pretty much impossible at the track to be able to really change anything. So that's one big thing. And the next one is getting um, my painting angle dialed in a lot better. And then probably just replacing the 440 with something that's higher compression, will look better than what it is now because it is so slow. But we hit 15s and that's a win for me. So let me pack up. I gotta go find my chairs, which we were drinking with somewhere way over there with. I hope they're still there. We'll figure it out. Yeah. All right, lessons learned. I, I think moving forward, truck did everything we needed to but if you're gonna come out to duct tape drags i recommend bringing instant coffee instant coffee yep if, especially if you're gonna stay out here uh so we rented an rv so that made it a little bit easier i guess because now we don't have to like leave every night and head home pack everything up some people would be very trusting and leave their stuff out here uh overnight but um bring I guess I don't know um make sure you stop and get a bunch of ice beforehand it is really really hot out here and sometimes yeah. RVs take a while to cool down yep uh, another thing too is uh, little bikes scooters golf carts four-wheelers see it all out here yeah it's and fun. easy way for you to zip around the entire property because it actually surprisingly is pretty large right. and it gets very large when it's 100 degrees out and... I walked about five miles both yeah. days from our truck spot to the grandstand and back. Sneakers. Well, it's it's not five miles to the grandstand. Well, it's like, yeah, yeah. But going back and forth five and back and forth. Five miles per day total. Yeah. yeah. I mean, words are hard. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to keep backing up here. Make some coffee. Wait for Sean and we'll get this thing loaded up. Start heading home. So, yeah, other than that, I'm looking forward. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go next year. Uh, Big Army has det determined some other plans for me in the immediate future, which will make me miss next year. However, what I will say is that I'm looking forward to still trying to get this thing out, maybe autocross or however we can, to try to get a little bit more seat time in it and see if I can work some of those bugs and those kinks out with, uh, with that vibration. Because honestly, right now, that's a killer for me. Uh, once I can get that figured out, I think we're gonna have a lot more fun with this truck. But I think right now, my dog's going crazy. All right, so as of right now, I think that's pretty much where we're gonna wrap it up. I mean, this thing did great. I can't complain. Pulled everything I needed to and then some. And I think the fastest time right now that I have in it is a 15.92. <laughs> yeah. But 15 nonetheless. I think my next goal is the motor needs to be gone through. And I think if I if I was able to do this again, not obviously next year, but the year after, uh, if I don't bring the charger and I still spring the truck, I I'm gonna be shooting for 12s. 
maybe 11s. I'd be happy with 11s. But if I'm already at 11s, maybe I'll try for 10s. I don't know, this, this, is, this is the problem. This is the problem. All right. Keep building. <laughs> Why tens? Why not tens? You know? 